Mystery beckons, secrets unravel. Join Secretum on a thrilling exploration where the unknown whispers your name. While shadows hide untold secrets, your curiosity holds the key. Subscribe and like, unlock the whispers, and together we'll illuminate the path to hidden truths. Welcome to Secretum. Who would rise to take Tullus's place? Who would lead Rome into the next chapter of its storied history? As the city mourned the loss of its king, the answer to that question remained shrouded in the mists of the future, waiting to be revealed. In the wake of Tullus Hostilius's demise, Rome stood at a precipice, teetering between the echoes of its past and the uncertainties of its future. The death of their warrior king left the city reeling, grappling with the weight of grief and the daunting task of finding a successor worthy to bear the crown. As the Senate convened to address the pressing matter of succession, whispers swirled through the marble halls of the capital. Who would step forth to claim the mantle of leadership? Who possessed the strength, the wisdom, and the vision to guide Rome through these turbulent times? Among the contenders for the throne was a man named Ancus Marcius. Unlike the fiery Tullus Hostilius, Ancus was a man of measured temperament, known for his prudence and his respect for tradition. Born of humble origins, he was the grandson of Numa Pompilius, the revered king who had ruled Rome with wisdom and grace. Ancus Marcius possessed a keen understanding of the delicate balance between strength and restraint, and it was this quality that endeared him to the Senate and the people alike. Sensing an opportunity to restore stability to the realm, they rallied behind his cause, proclaiming him king and ushering in a new era for Rome. Under Ancus Martius's rule, Rome experienced a period of relative peace and prosperity. Drawing inspiration from his grandfather's legacy, he sought to govern with fairness and justice, striving to uphold the sacred laws that had been laid down by Romulus and refined by Numa. But even in times of peace, challenges abound and Rome was not immune to the machinations of its rivals. To the south, the Latin tribes chafed under Roman rule, their simmering resentment threatening to boil over into open rebellion. Sensing the looming threat, Ancus Marcius took decisive action, launching a series of military campaigns to assert Roman dominance and quell dissent. His efforts were not in vain. Through a combination of diplomacy and force of arms, Ancus managed to pacify the Latin tribes, bringing them firmly under Roman sway and expanding the borders of the fledgling republic. Under his wise and steady hand, Rome continued to thrive, its influence spreading far and wide across the Italian peninsula. But as the years wore on, the shadows of the past began to stir once more, casting a pall over the city's newfound tranquility. Ambitious men vied for power, seeking to carve out their own legacies amidst the shifting sands of history. And in the heart of Rome, whispers of treachery and betrayal echoed through the streets, threatening to undermine the fragile peace that Ancus Marcius had worked so hard to maintain. Yet through it all, the king remained steadfast, unwavering in his commitment to the welfare of his people and the preservation of the realm. His reign, though not without its trials and tribulations, would be remembered as a golden age for Rome, a time of growth, prosperity, and above all, unity. And so, as the sun set on Ancus Martius's illustrious reign, 
Rome found itself standing at the threshold of a new era, poised to embark on a journey that would shape the course of history for centuries to come. But that, dear passenger, is a tale for another time, to be told by the bards and poets who sing the praises of Rome and the indomitable spirit of its people. As the sun set on Ancus Marcius's reign, casting a warm glow over the marble streets of Rome, the city braced itself for the inevitable transition that lay ahead. The passing of a king, no matter how revered, always heralded a period of uncertainty, a time when the very fabric of society seemed to hang in the balance. In the wake of Ancus Marcius's death, the question of succession once again loomed large, casting a shadow over the city's bustling streets and crowded marketplaces. Who would rise to claim the mantle of leadership? Who possessed the strength, the wisdom, and the charisma to unite the fractious factions of Rome under a single banner? Among the contenders for the throne was a man named Lucius Tarquinius Priscus. Born of Etruscan descent, he was a man of towering ambition, whose meteoric rise through the ranks of Roman society had earned him the favor of both the patrician elite and the common folk alike. With a silver tongue and a keen intellect, he had amassed a vast fortune through trade and commerce, solidifying his position as one of the city's preeminent statesmen. But it was not just his wealth and influence that set Lucius Tarquinius apart. It was his vision for the future of Rome, a vision that promised greatness and glory on a scale never before seen. Drawing inspiration from the grandeur of his Etruscan heritage, he sought to transform Rome into a bastion of culture and civilization, a beacon of light that would shine forth across the known world. And so, it was with great fanfare and celebration that Lucius Tarquinius Priscus ascended to the throne, his coronation marking the dawn of a new era for Rome. Under his rule, the city underwent a period of unprecedented growth and expansion as he embarked on a series of ambitious projects aimed at beautifying and modernizing the capital. From the construction of the Circus Maximus, the largest chariot racing stadium in the world, to the building of the Cloaca Maxima, an intricate system of sewers that helped to keep the city clean and hygienic, Lucius Tarquinius spared no expense in his quest to elevate Rome to new heights of splendor and sophistication. But amidst the opulence and extravagance of his reign, dark clouds loomed on the horizon, threatening to eclipse the glory of Rome's newfound prosperity. For all his virtues as a leader, Lucius Tarquinius was not without his flaws, and his insatiable appetite for power soon began to alienate those who had once hailed him as their savior. Whispers of tyranny and oppression spread like wildfire through the streets of Rome, as the common folk grew disillusioned with the king's extravagant lifestyle and heavy-handed rule. And in the corridors of power, ambitious nobles plotted and scammed, their eyes alight with the fires of rebellion. Yet despite the mounting discontent and simmering unrest, Lucius Tarquinius Priscus remained resolute in his determination to rule with an iron fist, heedless of the consequences that his actions might bring. For him, the ends justified the means, and he would stop at nothing to ensure that his vision for Rome became a reality. But as the years wore on, and the shadows grew ever darker, 
it became increasingly clear that Rome stood on the brink of catastrophe, its fate hanging in the balance as the forces of destiny conspired to shape the course of history. And in the heart of the city, amidst the crumbling ruins of a once great empire, the echoes of the past whispered of a time when kings and heroes walked the earth, their deeds immortalized in the annals of time for all eternity.